While in Sudan, bin Laden remained politically active. For most of the 1990s, he maintained an office in London, named the Advisory and Reformation Committee. The office was believed to have been involved in distributing literature critical of the Saudi regime. Following bomb attacks in Riyadh and Khobar in Saudi Arabia, Sudan started to come under increasing pressure to expel its controversial guest. Investigators believed bin Laden was tied at some level to both attacks. Somalia was where bin Laden chose to open up his first front against the United States. In 1992, the Marines were sent there on a relief mission. Bin Laden provided arms and expertise to the Somalis. Soon after, American helicopters were shot down and Marines attacked and killed in the streets of Mogadishu. The Americans withdrew. Another superpower humiliated. Another Bin Laden victory. The pressure on Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir to expel bin Laden intensified. As well as the Saudis and the Americans, the Egyptians added their voice. In 1995, an assassination attempt was made on Egyptian President Husni Mubarak in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa. Bin Laden and his Egyptian allies were suspected of being behind the attack. It was thought that bin Laden used his farm in Sudan as a training camp for Egyptian militants opposed to Mubarak. Perhaps to counter this allegation, bin Laden accepted an interview request from a Cairo-based American journalist, Scott McLeod. The interview took place at bin Laden's farm in Sudan. Well, I met him two times altogether. Uh, it was part of the same interview, though. I went to Khartoum in Sudan in uh, February, early February of 1996, and it was during the holy month of Ramadan. And I met bin Laden at his office uh, in Khartoum. He had a construction company uh, called, I think, Al Hijra Construction Company. And I met him in his office as the manager's office in that building. Eventually, in 1996, Sudan succumbed to international pressure to expel bin Laden. In May of that year, bin Laden left. His land and investments in the country were appropriated by the government. فحتى لما عملت اللقاء مع الشيخ اسامه بن لادن انتقد الحكومه السودانيه وهاجمها بشده حقيقه يعني وتحدث بمراره عن انهم كيف خذلوه وكيف خذلوا انسان مسلم زيه وكيف انه وثق فيهم ويعني واعتقد انهم بقيموا دوله اسلاميه حقيقيه وفي الاخر يعني طعنوه في الظهر بن لادن still had friends in Afghanistan at the time, in 1996, the country was under the presidency of Burhanuddin Rabbani. Allies of the Afghan president recognized that bin Laden was in need of a new sanctuary. إسلامي لمولى محمد يونس خالص كانوا على صلة بهم وفي إحدى الأسفار الذين وفت منهم سافروا إلى السودان في زيارة والتقوا هناك ببعض الأشخاص منهم 
Osama bin Laden. Pedi ke masalan pedi ke lagi syaitan itu maklum dah kasihan sih juan dari dia itu maklum sih kacih urusan muskil pih nishi. Pedi ke yau mujahid sih buat sih de Hizb Islami ek matiar komandan u de Engineer Mahmud de استاد سیاف کماندان و او با خیلی دمولی سب خالص کماندان و ساز نور د استاد سیاف کماندان و او زن نور کسان چه اگوی اوس جوان دیدی دا کسان تو لارال سودان تا پدی وقت که دست معلومه ده چه د سودان دولت تر زیادی دیم که فشار لندی چه باید اسامه لخبال خاوری نو وشاری یا دا چه د امریکان رو ترسلیم که نو دوی چلوان الحال تا اوسامه سر ولی دل اوسامه تو دا بالا نوار کرد چه تاس و راشه افغانستان تا بن لادن و هز اجیبشن آلائز لفت سودان و رترن تو افغانستان دا پرشه وز لفتد آن سودان which had been at risk of international sanctions for sheltering those suspected of involvement in the assassination attempt on Mubarak. <laughs> Mustafa Hamza was the main suspect in the plot to kill the Egyptian president. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Zedan met him in eastern Afghanistan in 1996. Hamza had fled there, the place where Bin Laden and other members of the nascent Al-Qaeda group had taken refuge. The place which Bin Laden called Khorasan, which is where, according to Muslim legend, an army will emerge to support Muslims in the Middle East. He came back. By that time, Jalalabad was liberated. He came to Jalalabad. And then he was the again guest of Professor Saif, but at that time government was under Professor Burhanuddin Rabbani, and they had no objection. He remained over there. When Taliban entered Jalalabad, they found Osama bin Laden over there, and uh, as I was told, they asked him, "You, you are an honourable guest of Afghanistan." You want to go to Kabul, we will help you going over there and join your own friends. And if you want to stay over here, you can be our guest. Probably Osama bin Laden decided to stay over there. Settling in Afghanistan, as a guest of the newly emergent Taliban, Bin Laden gave another interview. The cameraman remembers being surprised at how he was received by Bin Laden and his men. I read about, a lot about them that they are extremist or radical or fundamentalist type of people. But uh, when I entered the tent and uh, it was a uh, Ramzan time and they offered me a uh, uh, lunch. So uh, after that I feel a sense of security that uh, they know me that I am Christian and uh, they are behaving well. So after, uh, after the interview, we uh, all uh, sat for iftari and we, eat, uh, we ate in, uh, you know, in, in one plate. The, another uh, which he told me is that I am not against any religion, not any you know, uh, caste. I am only uh, against the policies of America, which they are trying to uh, implement on this uh, world, or you know, Im implement these policies on Muslim world. <laughs> He said to me on our second meeting that he was not against Americans, he was against the US government. But of course you hear this from many people in the Middle East. I'm not against English people, only against Mr. Blair, whatever it may be. He never showed 
and nor did any of his armed men ever show any hostility towards me as a Westerner. In fact, bin Laden, to my appalled um, fascination, he, he mentioned me in a videotape he made just before the US presidential election. وكذلك لقاءاتي مع روبرت فيسك وهذا الأخير هو من جلدتكم وعلى ملتكم وأحسب أنه محايدا In Afghanistan's ongoing civil war Arab fighters loyal to bin Laden lent their support to the Taliban. When I remember in 1992, after the attack of Najib, we sat in the house of Osama and we published the statement of the Prophet that if the Afghans came to the government, وفشلوا في إرساء دولة مستقرة واقتتلوا مع بعضهم فلا يجوز لكم أن تكونوا طرفا في القتال ضد مع طرف ضد ضد طرف آخر. كانت المعارك قد بدأت بين فصائل المجاهدين في أفغانستان وقلت للشيخ أسامة ما الخطة الآن؟ ما الهدف؟ فقال أنا حقيقة يعني متوجه بجميع الشباب الذين كانوا ينتمون أنذاك إلى تنظيم القاعدة متجه إلى السودان. وها نحن نقاتل منذ أكثر من سبع سنوات في الجهاد الأفغاني ومع الأسف بعد سقوط كابل بدل أن نحقق أهدافنا بدأت فصائل المجاهدين تتقاتل فيما بينها وهذه فتن فيها إراقة دماء مسلمين لا يمكن لنا أن نشارك بها Bin Laden's one and only press conference was in May 1998. He appeared with Ayman al-Zawahiri on his right and al-Qaeda's military commander Muhammad Atef on his left. Before a select few journalists, he announced what he called the International Islamic Front for Jihad Against Jews and Crusaders. The press conference represented a categoric statement of intent the front would take the war to America. Pakistani journalist Mazhar Ali Khan was one of the few journalists present at the conference. The journalists were under strict instructions. No independent videotaping was allowed. Khan only managed to take photographs. पहले तो जब वो आए वहाँ पे मतलब तो तोपों की उन्हें 21 तोपों की सलामी दी गई हम लोग हॉल में बैठे हुए थे तो जाहिर है जब तो फायर होता है तो बंदा वैसे ही हिल जाता है और वहाँ तो पहाड़ी इलाका था उसकी गुंजी बहुत थी तो हम लोग सब मतलब पीछे मुड़के देखा कि क्या हुआ ना तो पूछा हमने ये क्या कहने के लिए उसामा बिन लादेन आ गए हैं तो उनको सलामी दी जा रही है कि ये किस चीज़ की सलामी दी है कि जी इक्कीस तोपे जो हैं वो चलाई गई हैं किस तोपों की सलामी दी गई है तो वो इंटरव्यू हुए उनके साथ आतिफ थे उनके पुराने साथी जो पहले हम जब इंटरव्यू के लिए गए थे जब भी वो साथ थे तो दूसरे साथी उनके वो थे जहरी वो थे आए वो उनके साथ चार बॉडी गार्ड थे जिन्होंने नकाब लिए हुए थे मीनवाइल टेंशंस वर आल्सो एस्कलेटिंग इन द रीजन on May 28, 1998, Pakistan exploded five underground nuclear devices in response to India's nuclear tests two weeks earlier. The move provoked worldwide condemnation and fears of a nuclear conflict in one of the world's most volatile regions. Aides close to bin Laden at the time said that he sent a letter of congratulation to Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif 
following the nuclear tests. Nasser al-Bakhri, also known as Abu Jandal, is a former bodyguard of bin Laden. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Zaidan met him in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. الشيخ وسام بن ارسل رساله ارسل رساله يهنئ حكومه باكستان ويهنئ نواز شريف في تلك الفتره بعد تفجيات القنابل بعد تفجيات التجارب النوويه الباكستانيه يهنئهم ويذكرهم بان هذه القنبله هي سلاح الردع الاسلامي وانه لا ينبغي ان يتخذوا السلاح هذا وسيله من اجل قوميه او مثلا من اجل عدو التقليدي اللي هو الهند وكذا ولكن لا بد ان يستخدم هذا السلاح في حمايه الاسلام بدرجه الاولى حتى الشيخ وسام بن ارسل رساله الى نواز شريف في تلك الفتره وارسلها لاعضاء الحكومه Two months after announcing his jihad, bin Laden put his words into action. Al-Qaeda was behind the bombings of the US embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam in August 1998. As he had promised, bin Laden was taking the global war to America. The Americans understood that Al-Qaeda could attack at any place and at any time. But some experts raised the possibility that the attacks were masterminded more by the Egyptian militants than by bin Laden himself. On 20th August, before the attack, I received a phone call from Dr. Amin al-Zawahiri, and he spoke in English, as he is very fluent in English, and he told me that uh, Osama bin Laden is sitting next to him, but since he cannot communicate in English, so he was sending his regards, and Dr. Zawahiri told me that uh, Mr. Bin Laden is denying his involvement and Al-Qaeda's involvement in the bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. So he wanted me to convey this message through the media. He said things like, um, I did not know Ramzi Youssef before the World Trade Center bombing which left open the question that they met afterwards. But he said, one thing I will say to you, you will see many Ramzi Yousefs coming to your shores. He said, I predict a black day for the United States, a day after which the United States will not be the same, and was clearly trying to tell us that. And I think if there was any doubt about that, or the gravity of that, within seven and a half weeks, we saw the simultaneous bombings of two U.S. embassies in Nairobi, Kenya, and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, with 225 people dead. That certainly was the period on the end of the sentence bin Laden started that night. U.S. President Bill Clinton ordered an immediate retaliation with cruise missile raids on Al-Qaeda bases in Khost and Kandahar in Afghanistan. A number of Al-Qaeda members were killed. Bin Laden himself escaped unscathed. In that time, I met with the Abu Hafs al-Masri. وقال لي بأن هناك رسالة من الشيخ أسامة بن لادن نريد أن نبلغها للرئيس كلينتون عبر جريدة القدس العربي قلت له تفضل قال نحن سننتقم انتقاما لم يعهده أحد سنركع أمريكا سن يعني سنلقلهم درسا لن ينسوه أبدا just a few days before the cruise missile attacks. Whether by chance or fate, Bin Laden had decided not to visit the base at Khost, which would be targeted. Kabul <laughs> 
فالكل طرحنا فكره زياره كابو من اجل الجبهه وشيء من الروحانيات نسترجعها والرباط في سبيل رباط ساعه وكذا فما كان موضوع انه في خبر معين لكن من باب الاحتياطات احنا متوقعين ضرب المعسكرات شيء طبيعي جدا لانه هدف كبير والامريكان يعني معروف طبيعتهم الرد السريع ويردوا برد اي بس اهم شيء انه استرجاع كرامه فالشيخ اسامه كان متوقع ضرب المعسكرات حتى لما كان مقرر العوده للمعسكرات كان معنا مقر سري خارج المعسكرات بحيث انه قصف ما يقصف مقر الشيخ اسامه يقصف المعسكرات لكن الشيخ اسامه يصاب فكان كما يقال يعني ايش نوع من فضل الله عز وجل والهام من الله عز وجل نحن نتجه الى كابل فوصلنا الى كابل بالليل استرحنا ثاني يوم بالاسهار الرد وبقصة المعسكرات